Hi, welcome to Unit 4, Day 12, where we're going to discuss how to complete the red section of uh, your Unit 4 project. So, one of the purposes of your Unit 4 project is to predict the properties of your chemical and explain how these properties makes it useful. What we're going to do here is go over the expectations for how we're going to complete this red section where you will fulfill this purpose. So the first part of that red section where you're relating the property of a substance um, to its use is you're answering this question, what is this substance used for? Now, this section is required for both honors and fundamentals chemistry, so everyone should, should go over this information. When answering this question, you want to discuss the primary use of the substance, and that may depend on the everyday product you find it in. So let's go over some examples. Um, we're going to go over examples based on the types of products that it, that that we are discussing. Or we're going to start with things that are involving health and nutrition. So if your substance is related to nutrition and health, for example, vitamins, minerals, or any of the macronutrients you would find in food, you want to focus on how this substance is used by the body for health. And reliable sources when you're searching for this would be the Mayo Clinic, NIH.gov, PubMed, and Wikipedia is actually a pretty good source for a lot of this stuff. You just want to verify the source link. So when you go to the Wikipedia article, usually next to the information, in brackets, there will be a, a link, um, there'll be a number, and if you click on that number, it will take you down to the bottom where the references are. So you just want to verify those references in the Wikipedia article. So let's look at an example here. Let's say, for example, we're looking at vitamin B6. And all I did was I searched in Google vitamin B6 uses. And one of the sources that I found actually was from the NIH.gov. It had listed several things. It was about a page long. And I just sort of skimmed it. And I found that the second paragraph that I looked at had mostly information. And I just sort of bullet pointed by copying and pasting the information I found. So this is directly from the website. But I don't want to use this in my work. I need to write this in my own words. So if you want, I want um, if you want to, you can pause the video now and sort of read through these bullet points. And then in a moment I will show you how I summarize this information I found online in my own words. Great, so what I said instead of all of this was vitamin B6 is an important molecule involved in protein metabolism. It is helpful for maintaining a healthy immune system, cognitive functioning, and many other biological functions. Now, did I include everything that was here? No, I just sort of gave the basics. And so someone then knows that vitamin B6 is important and it's related to protein metabolism, a healthy immune system, and cognitive functioning. Remember, cognitive functioning just means brain functioning. All right, so what would this look like in my document? I would just take that information that I wrote and I would copy and paste it in here. Um, and then the other thing you may notice is I have the link. I forgot to tell you guys to do this, but it's important that you link the source that you got your information from. One link or one source is sufficient. Um, so you would just copy that link there. And that way I can go back and check and verify that information is correct. And if it's not correct, I can lead you somewhere else. Now, what if you're dealing with a different substance? What if your substance, instead of being something like vitamins or minerals or macronutrients, has to do with a pharmaceutical product? Um, in the case of a pharmaceutical product like medicine and drug or drugs, it's important to know if the, the substance, the chemical that you're focusing on is an active ingredient, which actively treats the symptoms, or is an inactive ingredient, which just usually helps with the delivery of the drug to the body or the appearance of the drug. Now, for an active ingredient, um, a quick online search, it just as done as was done for vitamin B6, will be sufficient um, because usually that's the one purpose that that ingredient has is to treat that symptom or disease. However, for inactive ingredients, they may have multiple functions, so you want to be sure that you to sort of help you narrow it down. You want to choose the function that's useful for the product that you found it in. 
So what do I mean when I say active and inactive ingredients? Here's a side of a drug packet and you'll see the active ingredients at the top. And in fact, it actually tells you next to those chemicals what it's used for. So expectorant and nasal juice decongestant. You may need to look up what those words mean. So what exactly is an expectorant? What does a nasal decongestant do? And then that way you can explain it in your own words. At the bottom here, you have these inactive ingredients like D and C yellow number 10. So I'm assuming that's coloring. That's just for the appearance. Um, but then they have other things like lactose, magnesium stearate, et cetera. So what, are the, what, are the, what is the purpose of these things? So lactose has lots of purposes. Why would it be useful in that, in that drug? Now, for all other types, um, just as with the last two examples, again, an online search should be sufficient and something like uses of, and then you can type the name of your chemical in the, um, in the online search. And again, Wikipedia is reliable as long as you verify the, 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 search, the sources within the Wikipedia article. Um, you also wanna make sure you, you focus on the primary use of the, um, chemical you're focusing on. Um, so I'll go through some examples. The first example is sodium lauryl sulfate. And that's something that you can find on soap bottles or shampoo bottles. And so it has something to do with washing, um, you know, hair or skin or whatever, right? So when looking that up, that's what you wanna sort of find, something that's related to that. And this is what I got from the Wikipedia article and I rewrote it in my own words. So this is in my own words. Sodium lauryl sulfate is used as a surfactant. And then I would define surfactant here and detergent. And I would define what that is in many personal grooming products like soap and shampoo. So this is just a very basic, just very simple. What are the uses? <laughs> Let's say you're doing something like uh, urea. Now urea has multiple uses, but if you found urea on the side of a uh, fertilizer, this is the side of a fertilizer container, you want to focus on that. So in this case, I would say something like urea is a chemical used in fertilizers. It can be broken down by bacteria in the soil and serves as a source of nitrogen, which plants need to grow. So that sort of defines why how it's used. And again, I got most of this information from Wikipedia, but I wrote it in my own words. Finally, sodium hypochlorite is used in cleaning agents such as bleach. It is highly toxic, thus it can kill many different types of bacteria. So again, that came, most of that came from Wikipedia, but it was in my own words. So if you go to the Wikipedia articles, you'll find that um, what they wrote there is, is different from what I wrote. So just in summary, um, you wanna do an online research for how the substance is used um, and Wikipedia is okay. It must be in your own words, of course, and a brief explanation of one to three sentences is sufficient. Um, if it is one sentence, make sure that it's sufficiently detailed because if not, then you're not going to um, get full marks. And don't forget to include the source link um, where you got the information. All right, that's it for this video. Um, for fundamentals of chemistry, you're done, unless you want to choose to do the second part. For honors chemistry, you must do the second part, so that's in part two.